a player. I've been broke as a joke. I've been a money maker. I've been a record breaker. Taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing. Popping, lock and stop and let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop. It's like a stain. <laughs> we make a whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. We kick a whole school. We think we're so cool. We take it back to the past. We gonna act a fool. Laugh and up jump. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Sports Buzz, a fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable Channel 23 on this March 7th. Yeah, we're in March. Yeah, we're in March, but we're back in the winter weather. The winter weather watch is just upon us all over the place. Very bitter, frigid day out there. Six degrees when I woke up this morning. What yeah, is it going was on? Very cold out there early this morning it sure was but we're here in the warm studio comcast cable channel 23 6 30 to 7 back live and back talking sports we had a good time the last couple weeks talking movies with kevin gallagher so thanks to him uh, for coming down of course his show time out with kevin gallagher you can check him out on friday nights i know and uh, mondays i believe yeah um, but uh, we're getting ready to get back into the swing of the sports thing, and uh, that means the phone lines are open. They were not open the last couple of weeks, but we're opening those back up. 203-792-4101 is that number if you want to call in and uh, catch up with us and give a call and talk about whatever you want. Say hello to uh, my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Rod Jr., maybe, is what you want to do. Yeah. I'll oh, say hello to him. Hang on. As his radio goes off, Bob right. had a... Uh, tough yeah. day out there yes it was this morning it was an early early morning big fire yes so uh not a good situation for uh those people who lost their home today but bob is here hello there bob how are you not too bad bob shows spotlight on tuesday nights at nine and wednesdays at 12. the last couple of weeks we were talking about the denver westerners event at the palace theater this past week and now we the have movies. another event to pull to pull to yeah. uh, plug and uh, it's official now, so you want to make the announcement. Who's going to be the celebrity for the annual celebrity breakfast there for the Westerners this year? Former former New York Yankee, Mick the Quick. Mickey, Mickey Rivers. Rivers. Mickey Rivers. Uh, so he will be the guy this year. They keep coming up with good names, Bob. Oh, i got to give the hey, Westerners credit. The, They're and, not pulling in any slouches, no, that's for sure. No, and Mick the Quick is a de definitely a good uh, – he, ha he had some – Great times with the Yankees, with oh, Rangers. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, he was around baseball for a while, around those uh, late 70s, early 80s Yankee teams. So I'm sure he's going to have a lot of stories to tell. And uh, it seemed like probably an entertaining guy. So uh, we'll see how he does on that. And we'll get all that uh, pertinent information in the upcoming weeks for you. We're still like, uh, three months away, I guess, yeah. from that, right? Can't get here soon enough. Oh. Can't, I, I can't wait for nice warm weather next, this week. Change the clocks. That's right. Spring forward. Maybe the weather will join up and uh, we'll get into some warmer stuff. Uh, Tyler is in there running the audio and uh, our man David Suero directing the show. Coming up with some new graphics. Showing off his chops, just being a show up in there. New graphics all over the place and uh, transitions and everything. Show's looking good with David around, so that is nice. Uh, but as we mentioned, there's the number, 203-792-4101, if you want to call and uh, check in with us. Spring training, uh, you know, I stopped in the paint store today, and uh, my guy Tom is a big Yankee fan. Right. And the first thing I said to him, really great spring training weather out there as it was freezing. But, uh, yeah, spring training is underway. Dustin Pedroia, as a matter of fact, Started his first game in spring training today. First at bat, base hit, little poke shot through the uh, infield there for Dustin Pedroia. So spring training, it's nice that they're back. Um, you know, the Red Sox, of course, defending champions. Pedroia is a big story for them. No closer is a big story. And will the Bethel native Matt Barnes be the new guy? Right. We don't know who the closers. They haven't announced. I mean, he he would be the guy. I would I would imagine. They haven't after signed Craig Kimbrell, and he is still out there on the open market. Um, so maybe they make a deal with him late in training. I'm not sure what's going on with them as far as that goes. Yankees extended a couple players, uh, Luis Severino and uh, Hicks, and then both those guys got banged up. Severino specifically with the uh, 
inflammation in the rotator cuff. Right. Shut him down for two weeks. He will not be ready for opening day. Not sure if that's a big deal or not. Uh, you know, like a guy not ready for opening day. And we remember he really struggled in the sep second half of the year last year when people wondered if he was healthy or not. So I think that's a little red flag for them. I know. I mean, I can't wait. For, actually, I can't wait for, spring, for uh, the season to start because March we have, 28th. I know. It's going to, I mean, it's 20, it's six degrees out this morning. Oh, I know. Can you and imagine? they start the season earlier this year. I think the Yankees open at home. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I mean I was going to say is I can't wait for the Yankees to open because we have some, we have three um, former uh, Westerners are, are, will be New York Yankees this year. In the big club or in, in the, the uh, in the organization? In the big club. Really? Yeah. All right. We're going to have to keep our eye on that. And your Mets... Jed Lowry banged up. Yeah. Todd Frazier banged up. But uh, how's Robbie Cano been doing? Uh, Anything? Spring training. It doesn't really I, matter. No, I, I'm waiting for the first two weeks and see if he gets. Yankees are six nailed. and five. Red Sox are six and seven. Mets are six and six. Um, and of course, Bryce Harper did finally sign, and he yes. went with the Phillies. I'm starting to think that um, the reason these guys are signing late is because baseball is trying to get what the other leagues have done in recent years, which is a 12-month cycle. And I think that's where the collusion is. Not that they're holding out because these guys ended up getting mega deals and huge right. contracts. Bryce Harper, 13 years without an out? Yeah. What, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, I know. That is a ridiculous contract. I don't know why a player would want to be locked up for 13 years. Why, well, what happens if you if you what happens after two years you go sour, or something? And what he went sour last year. Already. I know, but I'm saying you go. What happens? You go sour to team. Then now you think the, the city of Philadelphia is going to put up with that? Their no. fans, and he's coming from a rival team already in the division. Right. I think that's ridiculous, uh, but I think that's what they want to do. And then he automatically starts in on what the NBA has got dealing with with the tampering situation and he starts talking about Mike Trout right. who won't be a free agent for two more years so I think this is the first sign that MLB wants to do what the NBA is doing where it's all about player movement and when the players are going to move when they become a free agent whether it be a year or two years right. down the line and the storyline start talking about that he's openly out there saying yeah of course I'm going to call my my buddy Mike Trout and see that's ridiculous. The guy's under contract with Anaheim. Right. He, this is not a good route. It's a problem in the NBA. And if MLB starts going down this road, I think that's ridiculous. So we'll see what happens with that. But I did want to mention spring training is underway. We're not going to really get too much farther into that. Um, Champions League, speaking of things, back underway. Round of 16 took a, you know, got back underway last, uh, you know, this week, uh, the second leg. And uh, wow, Real Madrid, the defending, three-time defending champion, knocked out by Ajax, a I team know, from I the Netherlands, 4-1. And that game was in Madrid. This came on the heels of them losing the Copa del Rey to rival Barcelona 3-0 at home and then losing a La Liga game on Sunday at home to Barcelona. So twice in a, in a four-day period, they lost to rival Barcelona at home and then they lost and got knocked out of the Champions League in the round of 16 at home over a seven-day period. Three losses at home for Real that's, Madrid. That's that's bad. <laughs> Terrible. Stunned they were, oh. and they are out. Uh, the team that I've been following, Borussia Dortmund, knocked out. Tottenham finished them off. They've been a feel-good story. Borussia Dortmund had been for a while as they were in uh, top of uh, their league there in Germany. And they have now fallen, and uh, Bayern Munich has caught them in the top of the league standings there. And now they are also out of the Champions League. And I follow that team because the American Wonder Kid is on that team, Pulisic. And uh, but they are really coming apart at the seams. It seems down the stretch of the season here, and they are out. Tottenham moves on. Um, and then yesterday it was a VAR video assist review. Late controversial comebacks. Man United went to PSG and uh, got a late penalty kick in stoppage time with the video assist uh, review on a questionable penalty. And they get a 3-1 victory to come from behind. If they went into that game down 2-0, they lost 2-0 at home in the first round, right. first leg of that. And they end up getting past PSG. 
and uh, Roma also had uh, gone into their game ahead of um, Porta and uh, they also lost 3-1 on a late video assist review penalty as well. Um, so controversy late in those games. Next week it's Man City uh, ahead 3-2 in aggregate on Schalke uh, and we'll see if they can advance. Juventus is losing uh, and you know remember they got Ronaldo and right, they're supposed they to be the team that's supposed to get them over the hump but they're down 0-2 to Atletico Madrid. And uh, Bayern is even with Liverpool 0-0 and Barca also 0-0 with Lyon going into their final second leg of those games next week. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so interesting stuff as the knockout rounds uh, begin here in earnest and finish here in earnest uh, before the quarterfinals, which will head up next. Uh, college basketball conference tournaments get underway next weekend. Some of the lesser leagues, I think, maybe start this weekend. Yeah. Um, UConn, of course, is not in a great position. Ninth no, in the AAC, 5-11 and 11 in conference play, 14-15 and 15 overall. The only reason there's been a, a reason to go to any of their games recently is because a couple of the celebrations that take place. Did you see this? Yes, I did. Uh, they first celebrated the 1999 team, their first ever championship. And you see Rip Hamilton, Khalid al -Amin right there missing. Uh, Kevin Freeman was in that picture as well. It was Ricky Moore, and this was disappointing because Ricky Moore was the glue of that team. And uh, he was the defensive stalwart. He also had a great game in that game offensively as well. Right. Uh, but he was part of Kevin Ollie's coaching staff. And uh, we know that there's a bad situation going on with Kevin Ali um, and the Yukon Huskies as they fired him for cause and he's um, suing them. So Ricky Moore is part of that, unfortunately. And he said with the bad blood, he just couldn't see himself going uh, to uh, this uh, celebration, which was really unfortunate. Fans would have loved to have seen him and celebrate. Uh, but it was good to see them, and Jake Bosco was there as well. Um, and they also retired. Now, I have mixed feelings about this because Say Hey Ray Allen yes. turned it to uh, Trey <laughs> Tor Allen as he jumped ship, ship from the Celtics, joined up with the Heat, hit the big shot to salvage that series for the Heat in game six, the buzzer beater for three, on the kickout rebound from Chris Bosch to the corner and saved a Bron Bron's bacon in that game six, and they went on to win it in overtime and then win game seven uh, to give them that first victory against the Spurs. Of course, the Spurs came back the following year and nullified that and proved once and for all that they should have won that series. Popovich was the one who blew it, not having Tim Duncan on the floor, and uh, two offensive rebounds in the final 50 seconds of that game cost them. Why he didn't have him on the floor for those rebounds, I don't know. Uh, poor coaching decision there, uh, but the Spurs, of course, came back and bludgeoned yes. the Heat the following year, proving that they should have won it the year before, and that broke up that Heat uh, team right there. But I mixed emotions. They did uh, retire Ray Allen's jersey. Ray did not win a championship for the Huskies. This is true. He did uh, lose in that epic game against UCLA, uh, in I, I think that was Elite Eight. I don't even think they made the Final Four that year. Um, it was years after that. Um, and that was a year I remember. I was actually on a cross-country road trip, Bob, and uh, we were in Vegas at the time of that defeat. And uh, they lost that game. I think it was like a 90. It, yeah. The points were yeah, in the was, 90s, like 96, yeah. 91, something like that. Entertaining, great game, but tough loss. Uh, for them, UCLA, of course, won it that year, as a right. matter of fact, and they were playing in the West Coast, and they had the fans behind them. Um, so UConn uh, lost some games recently. They did break their losing streak with the win against uh, South Florida 60-58 the other night. They lost to Wichita State 65-63 and Cincinnati 64-60 uh, as we got Mike the Met Maniac. McFadden coming in. He took a break from us. He, uh, we gave him some time off. Didn't force him to come down for the movie shows, but he's ready to get back <laughs> into it as well. We'll get him mic'd up and sitting behind Bob over there. Um, you know, in uh, the AAC, Houston is ranked 12th with a 27-2 record. Cincinnati ranked tw uh, 20th with a 25-4 record. UCF 
uh, cracking the top 25 at 25 with a 22 and six record. South Florida, we think might get into the tournament, but they got screwed last year, so you never know. Right. And uh, the top 10 going into the final week of the regular season, Gonzaga, number one, Virginia, number two, North Carolina with five losses, Bob. Right, that's what we were talking about before the show. How, how does somebody with five losses get to be in a third spot? Ranked number spot? three, Duke right behind them. Um, at four and Duke is what three and two I believe without Zion Williamson since right. that uh, blowout sneaker heard around the world. Oh yeah. Um, Tennessee uh, ranked five, Kentucky six, Michigan with six losses ranked seven, Texas Tech, Michigan State and LSU. So a couple of SEC teams that you haven't heard of in a long time, LSU and Tennessee uh, in the top ten there. Um, and you were asking about Georgetown and St. John's. Yeah. They are bubble teams right now. It looks like maybe the Big East will only get three teams this year. G-Town and St. John's under Mullins and Ewing have done better, much better actually this year with some big wins, but also some bad losses. Right. I, it's funny, every time I see Big East action, I say, there's nobody in the Big East. <laughs> well, I find it comical. Like in recent years, you know, Providence has been in the right. top 25 and it's like, Providence couldn't win a game right. to save their life when UConn right. and Syracuse and Pitt oh, yeah, and all those is. teams were in Louisville were in the top, in the Big East. Now, you know, all of a sudden they're a top 25 team in recent years, not this year. And also this year I've seen uh, DePaul winning games. Right. DePaul couldn't win any games. Right. And I remember, I mean, DePaul of olden days was a great team. And I, you mm -hmm. always waited for DePaul in the Big East when they joined to get some big marquee victories. They finally got some big wins this year, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Brackets uh, will be we'll a week from on, Sunday. Uh, uh, as far as UConn women, I see they retired uh, super uh, and... Um, oh, did they retire some numbers recently? Yes, I yeah. missed that. Yeah, they retired uh, uh, Rebecca Lobos. Really? Okay, yeah, well, well we missed week. that. And uh, we're going to see. They're not going to be a number one. Well, they might be a number one seed, but they won't be the number one team going right. into the tournament as they have had a couple losses. Um, so, you know, it's going to be going on three years, I think, since right. they've won. And this is all new players at this point who have now dealt with two years of disappointment. So the pressure for them will be starting to mount higher yeah. and higher the farther away they get from a championship. So there will be, you know, legitimate reason to get in tune to that and uh, see what the drama unfolds with UConn basketball um, the, on the women's side. And we will definitely talk more about that as that comes down uh, going into next week. You know, they might not even win their tournament. Uh, in the AAC, if they were in the Big East, I'd say they might not win the tournament. Right. But in the AAC, they seem to be clear ahead of everybody. But in in the uh, Big Dance, right. you know, they've got players that need to prove themselves. So we'll see what happens as that goes. And uh, maybe I'll go back and take a look. I missed that uh, the celebrations on there. And I guess down the stretch, both the men's and women's were doing big celebrations. Uh, Mike, you missed a little. We did touch on... Uh, uh, spring training. You got anything you want to say early on about your Mets? And let's first say <laughs> hello, actually, to Mike there. How you doing there? I'm doing okay. How you doing, Scott? Not too bad. Uh, besides the fact that it's freezing up here, oh, yeah. are you warmed at all by this, at least the sights of spring training or anything jumping out at you besides a couple of maybe Jed Lowry? Are we worried about that? Well, I, I, there's Frazier? still, you know, there's still some moves they've made that are, are kind of questionable. I mean, you could have gotten Adam Jones. You saw in yes. Carlos Gomez, that, you great. know, and Adam Jones is definitely a major league type of ball player. Uh, he's uh, his defense isn't what it used to be, but if I had the ch chance to get Adam Jones as opposed to Carlos Gomez, I mean, there, there's you know not even a, ch a choice in reference to that. I get Adam Jones. Uh, in reference to Lowry, hopefully he makes it back early uh, in the season. I, for some reason, I just have a feeling he might go on a disabled list. I hope I'm hope I'm wrong because you know how great the Mets medical staff has oh, been yeah. over the last couple of years. <laughs> and also, it just seems so, like it's they're everybody they sign is snake bit. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like I thought, Jeff Lowry was a great signing, but if it turns out he's going to be hurt, banged up. 
I mean, it's just and like, man, the, and not only that, the but pitching we, staff is coming in healthy, correct? Yeah, but going back to Larry for just a second, you could have gotten um, the guy uh, from uh, the Astros, what's his name, escapes me, that signed for $1 million more than Lowry, mm -hmm. who was a lot younger than Lowry, mm -hmm. but the Mets decided to go with Lowry because he was a little cheaper, and of course this happened. So it's right. typical Mets. And of course we're on the uh, Robbie Cano uh, oh, yeah. uh, watch to see how long it lasts before he <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, Suero, our buddy, our new director, our old director, back. He saw the picture. He's been tuned out. He, he missed the whole signing. He was like, wait a second. Robbie Cano's with the Mets, so yes. <laughs> David's excited Martin, about Martin it. Gonzalez. That's Martin, what I Martin yeah, Gonzalez. That's yes. the guy I was thinking right, of from, yeah. 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 Right, we're going to move on, and we're going to jump to the NBA. Um, is it a coincidence that we took uh, some time off talking hoops and yeah. uh, the Celtics were miserable for yeah. all those times? You know, it all started when they lost that game to the Lakers mm -hmm. about right. a month ago. And I said at that time, I'm taking a break from this team for a month because I know it's going to get ugly at <laughs> yeah. this point. You can't beat the Lakers at home in that situation. You're that, that's ridiculous. It. You might as well quit. I, you know, <laughs> the season's too long to begin with. I can't be like, you know, throwing things around my house in the middle of February on a cold night and staying up all night because they lost to the Lakers. So, and it got bad. Yeah. I mean, there was some terrible losses, for, including that loss to the Clippers the night after. Then you had the All Star break. They came back from that, losing like six out of seven, seven out of mm -hmm. ten, eight right. out of eleven. I mean, and some blowouts as well to the, I mean, to the Bulls of all mm -hmm. teams, <laughs> the Raptors. You know, going up to Toronto and getting crushed. Rockets came into Boston and blew them out. The Blazers took care of business in Boston, and you're just wondering what's going on, especially with all the chatter with Kyrie Irving and all mm -hmm. this stuff. Hey, wait till they start playing the Knicks. That's, that's when the, that'll be the, uh, uh, the If they ultimate, lose to uh, the Knicks, it'll be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> they go the on the road uh, on Tuesday night, and they pull off. They hand the Warriors the worst loss mm -hmm. at home in the Warriors' tenure under Steve Kerr. Mm -hmm. In the last five years, they blow them out by 128.95. And the call of the night, the Celtics announcer, and Cedric Maxwell is the caller man, and the play-by-play uh, -play guy at 9-0 goes, there will be no uh, stress tonight, no suspense tonight. <laughs> Cedric Maxwell says, you're calling this this early? <laughs> and he was right, 128-95. Wow. They crushed him mm -hmm. and they backed it up with a 111-109 victory in Sacramento without Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. who, you know, I mean, this guy plays six games, seven games in a row, and that's like probably the most he played in a row all year. He can't right. stay on the court. But, um, you know, Hayward gets the, the game winner as he hits the shot with two seconds left against the Kings, the nice fadeaway baseline eight-footer. Uh, and he also had 30 points in that Warriors win. So we'll see if they get it together. And then they go to the Lakers on Saturday. So maybe it comes full circle. They can get that victory against the Lakers and also Clippers on Monday to uh, do a full circle from where it started with those two losses because before that they actually were playing well. Mm -hmm. Back in the mix they had moved up to the three spot. They're back down to the five spot. They're two and a half uh, behind the Pacers for the third seed, one and a half behind the Sixers with 16 games left. So they really want to move up into those top three, especially. They don't want to play the Sixers, I don't think, in the first round, no. especially if you're a five versus four on the road, mm, right. even though they have beaten the Sixers, I think, eight games in a row or something like that. Um, and they beat the Sixers right before for the All-Star break. But they want to get home court advantage. They want to get into the top three if they can to avoid the Sixers overall in the first round. Um, the Pistons are right behind them at the sixth spot. The S Pistons are actually one of the hot teams. Andre Drummond, speaking of former Huskies, 30 points last night. Huh? Has, um, I think, 14 straight, maybe 16 straight double doubles. Okay. Um, and they are 8 and 2 in their last 10. And the Nets have now fallen behind the Pistons. The Knicks have, have played four more. There's only 16, depending on who you are, right. games left. Yet, the Nets have played four more games than the Pistons this late in the year. That seems like a very strange scheduling that anomaly. Like, that doesn't seem right, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, the Nets are 34 and 33, Pistons 32 and 31. That mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. The Heat have moved ahead of former Husky Kemba Walker into the eighth spot 
at 30 and 34. Hornets, 30, 29 and 35. I don't know if Walker and the Hornets are going to make it. Kemba was a starter in the All-Star game this right. year, having a great season. And, um, you know, but it's just not enough. They don't have enough guys. Jeremy Lamb is like the second leading scorer on that team. Another former Husky. Magic are actually ahead of them at 30 and 36. Out West, Warriors, losers of 305, uh, 305 Nuggets. Rockets, winners of six in a row. OKC, Blazers, Jazz, Spurs winning four in a row. Clippers winning three in a row. The Spurs and Clippers at 37, 29 are seven and eight. The Lakers at 30 and 35 are not getting in. Oh, you mean that? You mean uh, look, Bron Bron's not going to make it? Bron <laughs> two and eight in the last ten. Losers of four in a row. Celtics better uh, so make it five in a row. I guess we're not not wor worried so about. So guess uh, what? No championship this year. <laughs> if you add up all the times that Michael, Dr. J, yeah. Larry, and Magic and players of that ilk have missed the playoffs, you're still going to get zero. <laughs> Bron Bron's about to miss the playoffs. Going, I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Bron Bron goes to L.A. Yeah, and doesn't make the playoffs. And the Lakers, the fake show, mm. are not going to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means we're, we should, we'll be changing teams next for next year. Going, I got to go someplace that we're going <laughs> to. Give me a break. Knicks have fallen all the way down to the worst record in the NBA. You got to finish in the top three of the worst to make sure you get the press percentage to get that number one seed. And they are 13 and 52. Suns are ahead of them in Cavs. And the fourth team is 19 and 47. So they're definitely going to finish in the top three. Maybe they'll finish with the worst record. I don't know that that matters hey, as hey, much. Hey, wait a minute. We might get a win against the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, Bob. Never know. <laughs> Spike Lee would tell you you're tanking. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to win. And uh, the Bruins are on a 17-game point uh, streak without losing. Oh. So if they got points in 17 straight games, they finished the entire month of February without a loss. When was the last time they finished a month without a loss, Bob? Uh, I don't know. 2011. What happened in 2011? I don't know what happened in 2011. This they won the, they Stanley won the Stanley Cup. Stanley Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they beat uh, the Whalers, or no, that was the Hurricanes uh, the yeah. other night who, who as the bronze, uh, the bronze Bonanza was playing as they did that and a great win. Another great line by uh, okay. the Bruins announcer as he said they came back from 0-2. They pulled out the blubber from the whale. Okay. Burn it. Quick thing. Remember, <laughs> All right. set your clocks back and change the batteries in your smoke alarms. Good call, Bob. The firefighter lets us know that that is the best way to remind yourself mm -hmm. every year to do yes. it is to do it when you change the clocks in the spring ahead. And uh, a lot of people do that, but, uh, you know, not everybody does it, obviously. So it is a very good thing and a very good reminder. We didn't have enough time to get more into the NHL, unfortunately. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, we're good to be back talking sports, and we will see you next week. Take care. Thank you.